Hey everybody, welcome back. I thought I would just do a quick update on what's happening with the uh, new to the shop lathe, which um, lately it hasn't been hardly anything, okay, other, other than just some planning and scheming on what, what we need to do and what we're going to do. Um, I did order a stand for it, um, and I'll move things around, bring you in closer, and we'll, we'll have a look at that stand. Uh, and, I, and that's what I'm currently working on. And then I also ordered, if you've been here, you guys can see them. I ordered um, some gears that we can use for the change gears. The machine did not come with change gears. So they're, uh, they're metric, you know, modular, 1.5 modular, and various, you know, tooth counts. Um, just got them off eBay. Um, I, I looked around and figured for what they're doing, you know, these Chineseium ones would probably be okay. And they're actually good. Um, they even have hardened teeth. And we'll, this will be a separate project. We'll, we'll look at that, um, you know, in detail when we get to that. But uh, yeah, they're going to work. I do need to bore out the, uh, the bore sizes. And I need to make a hub for one and a couple of keyways. So uh, yeah, I think these will work out fine. All right, let me uh, move things around and bring you in closer and show you what's happening with the stand. Okay, as you can see, I went with the uh, Grizzly standard uh, base. And I did consider other options before going this way. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, you'll notice on the ground I've got blue tape stuck down. And I've also got shims, and they're, they're stuck down with tape also. Uh, like most shop floors, my floor is not level, okay, or garage floor. So I spent a lot of time, several hours, getting the spacing just right. And I started out, this one was the master, so I got it square and level first. And then I adjusted this one to be level and square. And then the same height as that one. So that took, took quite a bit of doing. And, you know, I had to go across with the level. And I used two different levels. This one here, <laughs> our favorite brand. <laughs> it was a freebie. <laughs> okay. um, this one is actually very straight. So I'm using it as a straight edge to make sure that we're, we're lined up. So the cabinets are in, in alignment. And then I had to use this one um, in conjunction because this one, the, the levels are correct. This one, nope. <laughs> uh, you can spin it around and you got about a, oh, maybe an eighth of a bubble difference when you, when you do the level test. So, anyways, this is how I've got it set to, to do the, the, the modifications that I want to do. Um, but before we go there, let me, let's talk about the other options. And let me grab the camera. And, of course, the first option would have been just to use this homemade wooden stand that the lathe came on. And it's actually built very well. Um, and... You know, if, if I was under a budget crunch, that's probably what I would do. Um, but I don't want to get everything set up with this stand and then a year or two down the road decide, oh, I want to put a real base underneath and have to redo it again. I only want to do this one time. Okay, and then let's come around over here. My other option was to pick up a couple of these end type um, toolboxes that go on the end of like a large rollaway cabinet. Um, they're about the right height, they're probably an inch or two higher than, than I would really prefer, but um, they're nice cabinets. You know, you get a lot of drawers, a lot of storage options, but they're not cheap. So by the time you buy two of these, and then it's still, you're going to have to modify them. You've got to put in some type of a plate on the top to accept the feet for the uh, uh, lathe and something on the bottom for 
for mounting feet or adjusting feet on the bottom. Um, and then probably a little extra framework going between the two. So, you know, there's a lot, a fair amount of work involved that way, plus the cost of the cabinets. So in the, in the end run, I decided just to go with the manufacturer's base. And Enco doesn't sell the base anymore. They don't, they don't sell this machine anymore. Um, but Grizzly sells this exact machine, just rebranded. So I, I, I bought the base from Grizzly. Um, it's not cheap, but when you factor in your time and materials and everything, um, and trying to fab up your own in a home shop, it's just not worth it. It's better off just buying from the ma manufacturer. And of course, these are import, I'm sure, China. Uh, let me uh, get you on a tripod here. I want to show you a few things. Uh, I zoomed in on this one. I mean, both cabinets are constructed exactly the same. Just one's wider than the other, and the other one has two uh, holes on the top for the bolt down. Okay, let's take a look here. So the, it's got a pretty nice latch on there. The door is um, pretty basic. I mean, the hinges are just spot welded on. In fact, it looks like I missed that one. Uh, might end up just uh, adding another spot weld to that. But uh, everything is, uh, I just measured it. It's all 14 gauge uh, sheet metal, the whole thing, okay? With the exception, can you guys see the top, okay? Yeah. With the exception, these runners on the top, they embedded, um, this is 3 8 thick steel. It's embedded into the sheet metal and welded in. And they did a similar thing on the bottom for the mounting uh, holes and, uh, and your adjusting feet. Other than that, it's all 14 gauge sheet metal, okay? Um, the welding looks okay. I mean, paint job is a paint job, right? Uh, one thing that I do like is it looks like after they build these, they put it in some type of a big milling machine and they take a fly cut or a face mill cut to true up the mounting surfaces, the other one as well. And I've checked both of them side by side and it's, they, they did a very good job of getting those trued up. So I, I like that. Okay. This is the part that I'm not very impressed with. So they give you this filler, filler panel that goes between and I'm not sure whether it goes this way <laughs> or it could go that way or it could go that way. You know, either the back vertical with the bottom sloped or the bottom vertical with the top sloped. I guess it's your choice how you want to do that. But, you know, this is pretty light, light gauge material. It's um, 18 gauge sheet metal, I measured it. And then this is a common thing, because I, I did some checking before I ordered it. And the common complaint is that this piece never shows up intact. It's always mangled to some degree, right? And you can see scratches, and it had a little bit of a, a bend to it as well. Um, the way this ships is they, they give you a, a small pallet and the, you know, the two, uh, bases are, are together on the pallet and then this is just on top like this with a little bit of padding and some shrink wrap to hold everything down um, so I mean, it's not very well protected as far as this piece the, the bases are protected pretty good they, they got quite a bit of bubble wrap around them um, so I mean I'm not planning on using this so I don't care <laughs> Um, but, uh, I mean, something to consider, okay? And then the angle brackets that hold that, I mean, these things are, sorry, it's out of frame. These things are really lightweight. It's the same, I guess, 18 gauge metal. And you got a couple of mounting holes. So it could go that way, or I guess it could go this way depending on your preference um, so I don't know if this is just 
intended to be decorative or if it's actually performing some structural tying the two together. I'm sure it does some structural help, but with only two screws on each end of the panel, you know, it's not going to give you much strength. Okay, so I'm going to do something different. Um, I'm constantly looking for storage space. So my plan is to uh, put a sheet metal panel all the way across the back. Uh, not all the way down. I'll bring it up to the top and then I'll leave room to get a broom underneath for cleaning. And then I'm going to run a couple of shelves, a bottom one and then a, a midpoint shelf. And I want to tie them in. I've already started and I've already started using some scrap uh, angle iron making some brackets so these are going to attach here something like that it's still a design and in, in process and then the sheet metal will attach to that and I know what you're thinking it's like okay we get the lathe on there and in its final position you know it, it's probably going to be a little different dimensionally and uh, and leveling and so forth. So my plan is to oversize all the bolt holes so I got a little bit of adjustability. So anyways, this is what I'm working on. Um, how much of this I'm going to film, I don't know. Um, as a lot of you know, when you're trying to film, it takes four times longer to get a project done. So I'll probably just film some highlights here and there. But uh, That's where we're at. All right, so that's what's happening with the lathe for now. Um, and here's my two uh, angle irons that I started on already. And then this will make uh, the across the pond guys happy. I'm going to use metric screws to attach the sheet metal. <laughs> I've got a ton of these that I got somewhere. They're uh, M4, um, M4 by 0.7, I think. Yeah, uh, coarse thread. So I'll probably just. Uh, well, I've already drilled, I just got to tap, tap these, so no nuts, we'll just uh, use the uh, angle iron as the receiving uh, part of it. Okay, um, I'll try to do an update periodically and uh, show you how things are going. Okay, thanks everyone. I guess I should mention this, um, probably obvious, but by having a sheet metal plate in the back, firmly attached at each side, and then some shelves that are going to be attached, something like this. This is a little bit too long. Um, and then also firmly attached here in this plane. That becomes a very strong structure because you're, you've got um, uh, you know, a lot of surface area in two different planes. So that, that should really strengthen this. And like I was saying, when I go to screw the sheet metal on. I'm going to oversize the holes just a little bit um, so that we'll have a little bit of adjustability um, in the event that something doesn't line up. In the worst case, I, you know, I'm not going to weld anything. Originally I was planning on welding, but I think I'm going to screw and bolt everything together. That way it can be taken apart. I can make adjustments and, and, and so forth. So that's the plan for now. <laughs> like I say, subject to change. <laughs> But uh, I'll keep you guys updated. A little closer look at the inside of the cabinet. So the, this latch is actually halfway decent. It's pretty substantial. But the, uh, the shelf I give you, pretty basic, just a metal shelf, nothing fancy. And then in the bottom, they don't do anything. It's just uh, as it is. Um, and this is kind of, I mean, I'm sure they need this piece there um, for strength to tie everything together, but it kind of restricts what you can put in. Um, and it even came with swarf. <laughs> That's from the threading, I think. So I got to do something on the bottom of these, but you know, that, that can happen after I get everything together. Um, either just put in a plate piece of wood or something or thought about even making uh, a pull-out shelf might be uh, might be uh, more versatile so 
yeah, pretty Spartan on the inside. Just looking at this hinge again, they did get a weld in here, kind of like a rosette weld, but uh, they didn't they didn't get it all the way down. I mean, it is attached firmly. Uh, is it worth messing with? Probably not. This one's a little better. Yeah, so.